back to work here on the apex motor got the hot water heater noise shut down and um, using the hero 7 camera to uh, shoot a little uh, footage of what the engines looking like right now so see where we're at so we took the clutch off again thanks to uh, Jody and Steve for sending me the tool for that uh, the next thing we did was take off the headlight and the instrument panel. Um, I was able to um, power up and take a picture of the mileage on the instrument panel before removing that. Then remove the airbox boots from the uh, intake manifold. So where I'm at now is I've labeled all the stuff that I've unplugged so far and I'm looking at the subframe assembly and how that's going to come out. So it is uh, bolted in right here. So those are going to come out and come around here and it is bolted here, here, and then it comes up, comes up and um, the steering column is connected to it. So I've had trouble trying to figure out how to get the uh, gas tank cover off and uh, the seat assembly will need to come off back there and then I think I have to take the steering column apart. Okay, so ran into something that's interesting here. It's probably not necessary, but I'm gonna take this whole front clip off so that I can uh, just get a better idea of, of what's underneath and work my way back from the front. Like I said, I'm just gonna disassemble the whole front end of the sled. So I removed um, the bolts that hold this clip on, but you can see right where I'm pointing here, um, it's a rivet. That connects to the subframe, but down below there's another rivet like that. It looks like it's a brass rivet that has to be drilled out because it's connected to the frame. So you can't unbolt that and just pull it off. You actually have to get a drill out and drill out a couple rivets. So uh, just keep that in mind. It's not all uh, screws and nuts. Okay, so here's one I had to look up on how to get the seat off of this thing. you think it'd be pretty simple. It is not. You have to remove the muffler covers. Then remove this whole back piece off of the back of the sled. And then there are two bolts here and here that hold the seat on. So... Hopefully uh, that saves you some time because uh, I'm scratching my head pretty hard on that one. All right, so we're starting to pile up with parts here. Take a look. Seat. Got all the uh, plastic pieces off of it now. Let's step back here so you can take a look at it. I've slowly been undoing the wiring labeling everything. I'm down to needing to drain the oil at this point. So I'll get the oil and the coolant and the fuel out of it next, probably. Okay, so I made some progress. I just took the gas tank off, which allowed me to get to this subframe here. Um, the steering column that comes down and attaches to this one here This little piece is in there pretty good. You gotta give that a pretty good sledgehammer to get out Pop that loose and then the subframe came off And in order to get it off of the engine you got to undo the coolant lines oil lines all the cables that are coming down from the handlebars uh, throttle I left a brake one attached just because I could fold it off to the side without getting brake fluid everywhere. Um, now I'm working on getting the steering, uh, I don't know, linkage arm. Uh, I'll show you what I'm looking at here. The steering piece comes across here to this point and then down this shaft to this junction and then through this arm down to this bell crank here. And that's what makes the steering work. But this has to come out in order to get the engine out. So 
I'm working on getting that piece out now. It's getting where I think I might grab the engine hoist from the uh, hangar and bring it on out. I think I'll probably get this out tomorrow. Um, the other project for tomorrow is to get the, sh the uh, garage ready. So this bench here, put wheels on it today. That used to be over here in the workshop area. That table is there temporarily. I'm gonna build a bench all the way across there, uh, off that, across that point there. Tomorrow, I'm gonna make it so these little storage bins from Costco will uh, fit underneath the bench real nicely. So I have a nice big workbench there. I'm gonna put some more lighting in here. And this is where I can uh, you know, mock up the engine. All right guys, so on the last uh, little video clip I did, I was talking about the other project that I wanted to get done in the garage here. That was to get the workbench complete. So I'll bring you over here to the workbench. Got to get rid of some of the stuff that I got on top still, but this will be a big, nice work area back in my little shop corner. And then I went ahead and built <clears throat> some built-in shelves over here uh, to help with the storage. And that really freed up the rest of the garage for the project. Okay, so I'm just removing the final oil line from the engine. I'll pull that oil line out and then I need to figure out how to put some straps around the engine to hoist it on out of the sled. so far all right guys so the engine's out I'm going to show you what it looks like underneath the engine so you can get an idea of what you're, you're trying to uh, do when you unbolt and remove get everything ready to remove the engine um, so let's take a look inside here this is where the engine goes this is the front engine mount on the left front engine mount on the right and both of those have these bolts that go through them like that then the engine mount on the back, you can see, is right here and right here. And that has this monster bolt that goes all the way through like that. And it is a captured um, on one end. You can see the square hole. It captures this um, bolt. So you only have to undo it from the right side and then drive it out. And those are the... Uh, basically four or three, depending on how you look at it, attachment points. Um, the other one that was a little tricky to see is the coolant line on the bottom. That had to be, uh, you know, I removed the clamp and then as you pull it out, you can release that one. Um, the exhaust comes in right here and there is these four um, manifolds. Those all have to be unbolted. And then there is this hole here there's an oil return line from the bottom of the engine that goes through there. And let me show you what that looks like. I went ahead and put it back on so I don't forget where it goes. That is this one right here. So you just undo that clamp. You can get to it while the engine's in there. Pop that line off and it goes out and up to the oil reservoir. On the other side, you can see where that coolant line 
came into right here. So again, you pop that off of there and the manifold's off. Make sure all the wires and everything are disconnected. You do have to undo, of course, the all the coolant lines and everything. I put them back on now just so I can store it and not forget where everything goes. It is all pretty labeled pretty good. But that's it. You can see it comes right out. There's no obstructions, you know, above up here once you remove the um, subframe or the, the piece that goes up on top and that connects to that. You can see the handlebars down there. Goes up, connects right in there and up to there. So once you get that off, it, uh, it's just a matter of what I just pointed out to get it to um, release from the chassis. I will be announcing soon what it is I'm gonna be doing with this engine, but it will be going into a new airplane. Um, real excited about it. I'll be going to get the project in a week. Uh, my dad and I are gonna fly out to get it. So, uh, and then drive back. It, it's a, it's gonna be a basically start from scratch deal. So. Um, I'll bring you along on that trip and that will be the big reveal what that is and what's going on there. So until it's an absolute done deal, I don't want to spill beans on it. So.